This is All Talk with Tom Jordan and Kevin Dietz on 760 WJR. Yesterday, President Joe Biden revealed essentially his wish list for what a 2024 budget would look like. And we spoke with Congressman John Molinar earlier this morning. He was very unhappy with it because it does radically increase spending by a couple trillion dollars and then radically increases taxes by more than double that. But the details, I think, that Biden revealed yesterday, Kevin, I think more than just, you know, Biden revealing his economic platform it's indicative of his future plans for office, that he believes this is his 2024 platform for his re-election campaign. Yeah, Tom, is, is, is Joe Biden moving back to the middle a little bit on some issues like crime to win support with independence? Is, is he going to uh, announce that he's going to run as a uniter like he did the first time, someone who's going to work across the aisle for the people of America? What, what is this budget proposal? He's, this budget proposal headline at least from Joe Biden's perspective, is I'm going to tax the rich and these corporations to help the middle class. Uh, that sounds like a preview of election mode, Joe, to me. Uh, try try and make a, a move uh, closer to the middle as an election moves closer. Joining us now is Dave Dulio, director of the Center for Civic Engagement and political science professor at Oakland University. Dave, how are you? I'm well, guys. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you being here. Uh, on the one hand, Joe Biden decides he's going to run again. It seems like he's going to. He's kind of said he was. Joe Biden seems to have given him the green light. Um, typically, you, you know, you just, you just judge someone who's in office on, on what they've done. You, you, you look at what they've done and they say, hey, he's to the left. He's to the middle. He's to the right. Um, but Joe Biden, he seems to, he seems to do one thing and then suddenly, start shifting what he says to make it look like he's more moderate. Uh, d does that work? Does it even look like he's trying to do that right now? I think there is something to that. I, and I think that there are some elements of the, the budget plan that was released yesterday that, that would uh, back that up. I, I, but I think a bigger uh, component of it is the, uh, the crime bill that, is making its way through or has made its way through the house and senate um relating to to the uh revision of the criminal code in washington dc right where uh house democrats uh vote one way and then the the president comes out and says that he's not going to veto um this thing if it passes and uh uh leaves sort of leaves democrats out to dry on it uh, in in a big shift to try to look sort of tough on crime uh, you know, what he did is it, it, by not vetoing it is going to be to uh, uh, strip out some uh, some some changes to that criminal code that would make uh, crime in D.C. Uh, less punishable, if you will. So I think that that's for sure a signal to try to get away from the uh, criticism of the, the folks on the left uh, of being soft on crime. To, to me, that seems kind of smart. It seems like he doesn't really need the left to be happy with him. Who, who else are they going to vote for? But besides, besides him, if he's the if he's if he's running and he's the the nominee, uh, and it, it may it may make independents say, "Well, wait a minute, that sounds right. That sounds kind of kind of where I'm at on this thing." Is is, is Joe Biden just? smarter than all of us that <laughs> seems odd <laughs> he, he's got good advisors for sure right and and he's no he's no dummy when it comes to politics right i mean this guy has, has been around for for decades and and you don't stick around uh that long without having really good political instincts and and, and not that this one's that that difficult to to figure out right is that uh americans are concerned about crime and uh, and and this sort of answers that question about where he stands. Um, now, whether or not that that stance is is consistent and and remains consistent is is another question. We'll have to see what transpires over the next year or so. Um, but but I think that uh, uh, that is is part of it. And and you've got some of those sort of smart strategic moves uh, in in that budget as well. I, I, I get that he does have some good advisors on some of those things that he says in the messaging out there. But then it, I ask myself, does he really have good advisors? Because he claimed yesterday that Republicans are calling to defund the police <laughs> and that he wants to stop them from doing that. Isn't it? It's the exact opposite in reality. And we all know that. 
So doesn't he open himself up to either he's totally detached from reality or he's a complete liar? <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and those are certainly, Tom, some criticisms that are going to get levied. Uh, against him, and and I think that you know you know who's we we said that that Biden is is no dummy. You know who else is no dummy? The American public, right? right? They they are really good at sniffing out um, stuff that doesn't make sense, and and I think that after years and years of of any number of Democrats calling for. De- and, and continuing to this day, by the way, right, to to defund police and, and to shift dollars away from cops into other programs um, that I don't think that flies with the American public. And I just don't think they'll buy it. No, and I, and I don't think also it flies. And, and I brought this up a couple of times already this morning, but I don't think people realize this. That speaking of you know diverting money elsewhere, he's been slamming Republicans for saying that you know the Republicans want to defund Medicare. But in fact, he has done that with the Inflation Reduction Act. He has stripped away more than three hundred billion dollars from Medicare to go towards hiring new IRS agents and you know invest in renewable energies. Those kinds of things, if more of them are revealed. What does that mean for a Biden presidency or a hopeful presidency or re-election campaign, do you think? Well, I think that it, it just all goes into the, um, into the record, right? And it's part of how he will be evaluated by voters, right? And, and that could come uh, primary if, if anybody and – could, and I think that we, we shouldn't just assume that he's going to remain unchallenged. Of course, Marianne Williamson has said she's going to run against him, but but you know I, I think we should we should seriously consider that that a, another Democrat jumps into this. Uh, you know, Joe Manchin has been making waves about uh, about maybe running for president, so you know he's going to have to face voters potentially in a Democratic primary, and then certainly if he runs in a in a general. Um, even if he's uh, if he's unchallenged, that'll be an easier path, obviously. And then if if he were to make it through a a Democratic primary, but he's going to have to go before the voters, and and they're going to have to have to make sense of of all this stuff that's happened uh, and continues to happen over the um, over the next year. But certainly his his record as president so far, I think that's just one thing that would go into that evaluation. Joe Biden talks about in this budget, he talks about uh, child tax credit, affordable child care, capping insulin at 35 bucks, uh, making sure the rich pay their fair share, protecting Medicare and Social Security. No, uh, no new taxes on those making less than four hundred thousand dollars, even cutting energy bills. These are all things that sound really, really good uh, to the everyday person, to, to the voters. The Republicans are left with uh, warnings about the deficit and warnings about uh, tax and spend. But uh, to, to the regular people, the regular voters, do, do they like like what Biden is saying more than the concerns of what Republicans are saying? Well, you know, those those things you ticked off there, Kevin, are, are all things that strike me as as popular and as uh, items that would get uh, a, a positive reaction from a wide swath of voters. And, and I think that but we have to remember that this budget in terms of policy, a substantive policy is is all but meaningless. Uh, you know, the president releases a budget every year this time, and it's uh, even in in instances where he he doesn't have a a, a Congress that has one party or the other party in control of at least one of the branches. The, the president's budget never gets fully adopted. In fact, the budget that the Congress passes is uh, almost meaningless because the only time. Uh, and, and you guys know this, right? That the only time that, that money gets spent, which is what we think of a budget as, right? But the only time the money gets spent is when Congress appropriates money through appropriations bills. Mm. And and yeah. those are the folks that hold the power. Yeah, so it's like the same thing again here, but we're we're hearing the rhetoric already from both sides. We appreciate you breaking it down for us as always. Dave Dulio, Director of the Center for Civic Engagement and Political Science Professor at Oakland University. Dave, good to talk with you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Your call is next, 800-859-0957, 800-859-0WJR.